2019 Toyota Camry. I was here several days ago. I did the recovery. As you may have seen in some of my other videos when I do show it, after the recovery procedure going down at least to 15 vacuum for recovery, I usually go down to 20 to 24 vacuum in recovery to make sure I get all the refrigerant out. Then after the refrigerant recovery, the technician will be replacing the condenser because it was in an accident. So after the accident, it was just bent but not punctured. So at that time, you hook up your nitrogen and I fill the system with nitrogen just like anywhere from 1, 2 PSI, 5 PSI. So when the technician opens up the fittings for the condenser, it's dry nitrogen coming out of the system, not wet, humid air being drawn into a vacuum and then flashing into a liquid into the system. You have to understand what's going on and why the systems get so heavily contaminated with moisture. Remember nowadays our vehicles come with either POE oil, POA oil, or PVE polyester vinyl, the, the other minority oil. Uh, the first two are extremely hydro, they're all hydroscopic, but the first two are extremely hydroscopic and it's very important on electric compressors not to expose them to the atmosphere because you will not be removing all the moisture using a vacuum pump especially in the short time periods and with the little cheap vacuum pumps or the big recovery machine through manifolds you're not going to be re removing the moisture like some people have read in books or have been spewed out in some of the little training courses so Here's a situation where this is a factory Toyota condenser and Toyota is getting smart now because technicians usually don't change the oil rings, um, especially uh, body shops. So Toyota now gives, at least on some of their models, they're including new O-rings for their condensers. So when the technician takes off the pipes, they could put new O-rings on because they always reuse them and I usually see them a year, two years later coming back with leaks. But it usually won't come back to the body shop because the owner of the vehicle has no clue about their car most of the time. They don't know their air conditioning was messed with. They don't know that what a technician did one or two years ago causes them to eat up a compressor later on or have poor air conditioning performance. So Toyota is now giving O-rings and at the same time, this particular technician, I have educated him, and he actually cares. Uh, bonus isn't not always the thing that all technicians are going after. Some of the body shop owners are like that, definitely, uh, or mechanical. But in this particular situation, when they had to replace the condenser, he just replaced the condenser as I got here. He waited the last minute because I explained to him how important it is to not expose the system to the atmosphere. So just as I arrived, they pulled off the old condenser, unsealed the caps out of the new condenser, removed the condenser and put the new one right in place immediately without exposing it to the atmosphere. So now I'm about to draw a vacuum on the system. And as you can see right now, I have the 12 CFM pump that could go down to three microns. I have the 8 CFM field piece that could go down to 20 microns. They're both hooked up to my manifold system. Before hooking up the system, like you should do on every one of your jobs, always draw a vacuum on your manifold first to see that it can pull down so it's not going to be part of the equation of any diagnostics looking for a leak or that your hoses are not contaminated with uh, wet refrigerant oil that is picked up moisture inside. So here we have a case where our gauges, our manifold, and everything is dry all the way up to the heads. Remember to use nylog or dielectric grease just on the outside edge where the O-ring. See, the O-ring is going to sit right there. It doesn't get smashed down to the edge. It actually sits somewhere in the middle right here, and that's the sealing surface. So if you could see, if my camera could pick it up, a little hair, wet hair, I got a little bit of nylog on there. So when you slip your O-ring 
that's on the inside of your gauges over there, that's inside there, it won't get dry scuffed or any debris and you clean them off. There, I didn't tighten it down, it's still under vacuum. The vacuum pumps are still running. So this was a clean dry system when it started. It was never really open to the atmosphere. It was immediate and a condenser went on. You will see the difference between a clean dry system in a body shop and you've seen many of my other videos where sometimes it's taken more than an hour just to get the vacuum down and sometimes I could not get the vacuum down just because of moisture contamination which you can read on a micron gauge and actually prove that that's the problem. So now open, 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 open. Now I'll close down the service fittings and you'll see how quickly a vacuum can be drawn. Okay, here you'll hear the difference. There it goes. Now the one restriction you do have when you're doing so is the actual fittings, the cores that are inside there, the pressors inside there, are actually a huge restriction on the system. So you have more of a vacuum built up in your manifold gauges and hoses and the restriction of the actual core. You might see a vacuum here at first when you've first seen it, but there is such a restriction and I have such flow that on the other side of the core it was still positive. You just can't read that unless you had a vacuum gauge tied in to the lines in some point after the course. So here, have we gone 60 seconds yet? And we're almost down to 600 microns. Since I tightened up the cores and actually exposed the system to vacuum. Now this is what it should look like in ideal conditions when somebody actually knows what they're doing and they actually care about the customer's car and when you have a very good setup. Your customer will not have moisture related problems like those guys who use shop air and they pressurize a system looking for leaks. They inject a bunch of air and moisture into the oil and the oil absorbs the moisture and the moisture stays in the oil they pull a nice deep vacuum. All they did was they cleaned out the air and the surface has the moisture out of it, but it still stays in the oil. And that will give you those intermittent problems where a customer says, you know what, my AC doesn't cool like it should. I'm driving it, it's 90 degrees outside at 80 degrees and it barely cools. Or sometimes it seems to stop and come back on when I turn it off or it cycles off and then it comes back on it works for 15 20 minutes because it's being driven hard the low side draws down it drops just past the expansion valve it flashes below the temperature at which water freezes and you get a little dam of ice crystals that build up as you lead in there and it starts restricting the refrigerant flow well after that restriction is your evaporator and if it's a hot day and you're restricting the refrigerant flow, you get poor cooling. And it could go off and on. It could be constant or it could be off and on. That is caused by moisture. And then if the customer goes by a few years, that's when you start rotting out metal components and uh, moisture with the refrigerant under the heat of compression also makes an acid that starts attacking all the thin metal components from the inside out. Your tubes are just a little bit thicker than Reynolds Wrap aluminum and foil. They're heavy duty commercial aluminum and foil that they use in uh, restaurants. This is barely thicker than that. That's how thick or how thin these walls are. Same with your evaporator. And so you start attacking this with a, even a weak acid solution. Over a period of time, it starts eating away and you get those little micro pinholes. And metal is porous like a sponge and as the acid attacks the surface of the metal it'll literally burl through like a worm going through wood and find its way out and then you get the leaks this is caused by mechanics this is caused by body shops exposing your system to moisture and compressed air so if you read in the timeline from when i put these down to now we're already into 200 micron range 
so we're basically good to go uh, for a refrigerant charge now where a system that had the condenser replaced worked on exposed to the atmosphere totally saturates and I could be here in oil and I could still be up in the thousand range 1500 range microns and not be able to pull down it shows you how much moisture is still bubbling out of the refrigerant oil that it cannot remove within a short given period of time and that'll be the end of this video right now and don't forget when you're using your pressure or your temperature clamps to definitely insulate the low side one from any blowing hot air from a, radi uh, from a radiator or from any radiant heat. If you had it back here and you had an exhaust manifold right here and it's in direct line of sight, use a piece of cloth and put it around your temperature probes to protect them from radiant heat or the blowing heat. And one thing about the field piece I haven't shown you guys yet, but you can actually do through here your evacuation monitoring and it'll log it over time. And here we show we're at 245 microns. I have gotten as low as 77 microns before I hooked it up to the system. That was telling me my gauges were clean and dry at that time when I started. You also can use your Bluetooth wireless scale Without using this item, which monitors your scale, you can do it straight through your manifold. It actually gives you the weight on your manifold, so you can eliminate this and do everything through this manifold and record it. And this can be a printout that you give to your customers. So everything is live and not just somebody's writing and you take their word on it, especially when you're in a high profit shop that's driven by uh, money and bonuses. Then you also can do your electrical. So if you had a three phase or two phase compressor on here, you can wirelessly hook up and clamp onto the wires. It's hard to get to, but you can actually log your compressor watts. And when it's initially kicking in, you can get that surge wattage and you can tell when somebody overcharged it and you can actually measure an overcharge by how many watts are drawn by electric compressor. Another thing by doing your electrical draw data logging, I'm gonna explain it to you right now. You can hook up to your electrical, log it. If you have a cheap aftermarket condenser and it's a nice hot day where they have fewer tubes for cooling passages and fewer fins for cooling, you'll have a real high amp draw on your electric compressor. Then recover the refrigerant, pop off the condenser, throw on the OEM condenser and do a comparison and you'll watch your amp draw go way down when you use the OEM condenser compared to a bad aftermarket, uh, let's say budget condenser replacement. That's all for now. Uh, we'll get into some of these other details at a later video.